So um, hello, folks. My name is Bruce McKenzie. Um, I've been with the Mars Society since its beginning. I'm also active in some other groups. And um, I, on my own, decided to run this session to get input from you folks of what might be good projects for the Mars Society to do. And um, let me, uh, I, um, I'll ask for input from, from, from all of you later, but let me just get through a few uh, slides first. So um, the title is Open Discussion about New Visionary Mars Projects, things that the Mars Society could do in the event that we say fell air to a million dollars. Now we don't wanna spend it all on one project, but, um, and um, so I'm gonna be asking you for ideas um, and, um, I, um, I'll review the goals of the Mars Society, and we don't necessarily have to follow those. And I'll go back to 2008, when the Mars Society did run a, um, a contest to decide what, um, um, what follow-on project might follow on after the FMARS habitat in the Arctic and the MDRS habitat in Utah. There was also a European um, hab in there. Um, let's see, and it, if you have something proprietary, don't talk about it, you know, and if you have something that you only want the Mars Society to know about, then um, contact the Mars Society headquarter folks directly. I'm active, I, I personally am active in a, no, a number of groups, and I don't want to keep secrets from one group to another, at least not about this. Um, anyway, a little just some information about myself. Um, uh, there's my contact information up there. I've been in the Mars Society since it was first, well, since a little bit before the first convention, I ran an email list for the steering committee. I've been on the email list, I, I'm sorry, I've been on the steering committee um, ever since it was open to um, the second round of people. I also um, founded the Mars Foundation and Mars University. Um, I'm active in the National Space Society and was active in some other groups. Um, if anybody wants to help with any of the following things, please contact me at the address below. Um, might be helpful to have one or two people help summarize this session and present it to maybe the steering committee or the officers. Um, I tried in the past and would like to try again starting a settlement um, discussion group or working group. Um, there's a, a Marspedia encyclopedia that I've been active in. Uh, the person really pushing that is James Burke, though. But you can contact me. Um, the Mars University has online courses, and we're going to have in-person um, academic programs in, next summer. Um, the Mars Foundation is doing things like planning, like planning settlements and, and architecture, like the image you see. And I know people and who, who we're interested in, and, and if there's enough interest, we could work on a mock-up of a Mars and, and lunar settlement or a handbook for construction. Um, okay, before um, suggesting new projects that an organization should do, you really need to just remind yourself what the goals of the organization are and what activities might reach those goals. So I got on the, uh, not wanting to make these up myself, I got on the Mars Society website and I found a bunch of text and I summarized it in the top three lines. The goal of the Mars Society appears to be the human settlement, human exploration and settlement of Mars. Surprisingly, it didn't say robotic settlement. It didn't say Mars in fiction, Mars in you know, ancient Greek legends. So. Um, a little surprised at that. And um, in, the, so in the announcement for um, um, a grant from Blue Origin, uh, they, they put out a press release that, used, that listed some of the activities we're currently doing. It's on the second and third line, outreach, education, media, running the conventions, analog habs, rover challenges, political activity, which by the way, I think there's not much going on these days private research and the chapters. It's been, it's not on the website much, but it's been sort of quietly announced that 
we are seeking to hire an executive director. Um, we received a grant of $1 million that came from the money when Blue Origin auctioned off a seat on their recent flight. And um, the plan is to use some of that to hire an executive director who hopefully will coordinate things and bring in more money as well, put some in an endowment and maybe use some of it as seed money to start off projects. But Bob Zubin, the president has made it very clear that he wants these projects to be self-funding. So, um, you know, we, he doesn't wanna just throw all the money at one project and have it gone. He wants to, you know, maybe use it to start some projects, but then, um, you know, let, have the prop, have, have the projects um, bring in money to continue to, to pay for themselves. Um, and the rest of the page is um, stuff off the website, just to, to show you where I got the stuff. Um, and we got plenty of time, but um, back in 2008, the Mars Society had done several projects and wanted to kind of scale up. Um, you know, the, um, um, I think flash line might have been uh, cost $100,000 to construct and a lot more to, to deploy. But they were looking for what, you know, what's a bigger project that would be more dramatic. And so they said, they said the contest is, what would you recommend doing if we could raise $10 million? And Mars Society members voted on them. And these were the 10 finalists. And they're kind of technically oriented. There's very little about, you know, um, publicity, um, education, um, you know, there's no writing novels, there's no making movies. Um, uh, by the way, I believe Rob is, um, so, so these are the 10 finalists and Rob is on this call today and he had the very first one about agriculture. Um, looking down at number five, someone proposed a Martian flying saucer. And uh, number four was a sample return, which we are, just now, NASA is just getting ready to cache the, set, the samples on Mars and try to bring them back with another mission. Um, one that um, we at the Mars Foundation proposed was an education center. We could really only get it started for $10 million. That's number nine. Um, and the winner of that contest was called Temple. It was a, te a tether demonstration using CubeSats. And whenever you're planning a project, you want to decide, you know, what are the goals of this project? How does it help the organization further its mission? What is the activity and mission you're going to do? And so I pulled um, that image in the middle off of, the, off of a website. Um, and um, it clearly gives that the, the mission is to build a CubeSat to demonstrate artificial G and the goals, the reason to do it are, is to inform the public, bring artificial gravity back into the architectures for future Mars missions, build a knowledge base, et cetera. So if you're thinking about what should the Mars Society do, um, put it in, it, 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 answer those questions. You know, what are the goals of, of what I wanna do and, and what's the mission? Um, we had to write a, um, a one page sort of executive summary, broke it up into four, four corners. And here's the one that I turned in for the Mars Society Education Center. Uh, and by the way, if anybody wants to dust this idea off with me, it's, uh, now is a good time. So contact me privately. And within this executive summary, you'll see purpose, goal, mission, deliverables, technical approach, cost and schedule. Okay, so I want to stop talking. Anybody who wants to just unmute your microphone and suggest something that the Mars Society might do. Um, and I will try to take notes and type along. Um, I don't have easy access to chat. I will try to. Okay, there we go. Hello? Oh, is that Jonathan? Oh, John McDonald, someone different. Yes. Good evening. So yeah. my initial, I put it in chat because I wasn't quite sure right. where you were going to go with this. So my initial thought 
looking at the 2008 proposals is that in 2008, those make perfect sense. I think back to where we were and yep, that, that would have been the sort of thing I would have proposed. In 2021, and this is not being an Elon Musk SpaceX fanboy, this is simply looking at what he has stated he intends to do and accepting the fact that he has $100 billion to do it. He has said that he intends to build the, the Transcontinental Railroad. Come and on, he yeah. expects that others will build all of the other things that need to be done. The impression I get is that the vast majority of, of NASA industry, and, and frankly, everyone interested in this, doesn't believe him, doesn't believe that he's going to do any of these things, and isn't taking seriously the question of, well, if he builds the railroad, and, and he actually has ships that can go there, what are all of the million little things that we need to do to actually build the villages along the way? He said, I'll build a railroad, I'll build the Israel. Everything else is up to something else, is up to someone else. That everything else strikes me as a very large list, whether it be base design or, or spacesuits or rovers or autonomous to deployment of solar panels. Or how to build the base? Once we how to build there. the base, yes. That's Not, the one thing that I've been looking for and I haven't seen anywhere. Mm -hmm. Lots of base designs, lots of life support, agriculture, but no one's talking about construction on Mars. Yes. Okay. And in um, particular, the, the notion that you look at these beautiful images and you go, that's great. How do I make that with like 20 people and 10 starships and whatever they can carry? Thank you, John. So, John, I tried to type in the summary of what you were saying in, in a window that you can see. Um, can you actually see it? I can, and you have, uh, you have uh, accurately captured it. Okay. Um, it, wow. By the way, that image there of a translucent bicycle, that the frame of that bicycle could be made from thin air on Mars. And that's something that, that we've been working on is, is, is the... Uh, the manufacturing and construction sequence. Um, and, and guys, feel free to um, turn on your camera when you talk or, or all the time and um, um, you know, it, 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 say your name verbally too. Hello, this is George Rogers. Can you hear Hello? me? Yes, it's I can George hear George. Um, you can't see my other screen, but um, I started a Mars construction company a year and a half ago, and I am using the moon base design as a base to start applying principles and, and procedures and developing standards and, and guidelines, exactly what you're talking about to build a uh, Mars base. And my, my uh, goal as a company is to ride along behind Musk and build the infrastructure that Musk is not going to build. And uh, the hardest part right now is to getting other people involved to where we can communicate together. Uh, right now, the first part of building a lunar ba uh, Mars base is actually um, building a propellant plant that will actually work there. And I'm actually uh, doing the design work on that right now. Um, I'm so sorry, far. did you say did you say a propellant tank, a, a no, big tank? Of plant. The propellant a rocket, plant. Yes. rocket propellant plant is the first thing that has to be designed and built and work on on the Mars. And um, but the infrastructure for rows, uh, start, you know, the landing pads, uh, the habitats, uh, a lot of what you're seeing in these proposals over the years is hypothetical. Um, constructability does not work in most cases. Uh, there's, I'd say, about thirty percent of what you see can actually be done. Um, the first two or three crews going there are going to be almost like um, camping. And you need to be aware of that. And that's kind of uh, where we need to start doing our construction, our constructability from. Because um, a lot of those habitats that are designed that you see designs, they have no idea how to put utilities in them. Hmm. You need to water, electricity, yeah. power, all that. Um, there's no way a lot of that will go into there. So um, that's what my company's doing. I'm, I'm actually writing standards for building on Mars right now. And um, based on 
IAS's eye guidelines, uh, what we've got from the Apollo moon landings. I've brought all that together and putting it all in one paper. And uh, uh, like I said, I've, I've, I've started a company two years ago. It's a one-man company right now. And um, it's just, you know, I'm getting to the point where I can offer it to the public so I can get some investors involved and, um, you know, get some partners and things. But um, there are people thinking along the lines you're talking about as far as building on Mars. Because uh, Musk did say he's putting the infrastructure in there for traveling and he's going to other people are going to partner to put a uh, building on Mars and put the infrastructure on Mars. So you're right. He's not going to do that, but he's going to be involved in it. Yep. Um, because, yeah, uh, yeah, I agree with you. And I could say a lot of what I've been doing is related to that. However, um, I don't want to dominate the conversation. Does anybody have comments specifically on this yeah. Topic that George brought up. Let's, let's try to stay on one topic at a time. Okay. Dusty, talk. Is, I saw your hand. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. I can Thank you Dusty. for doing this too. I appreciate it. It's nice. Oh, sure. Yeah. George brought up a, an interesting subject that I'm actually also actively working on, and that's trying to bring a lot of the sort of abstract, you know, what I would call sci fi view of. of what a lot of uh, we see in regards to Mars, which is very important not to take away from that, but we do now need to, since this seems like this is happening very soon in the next five years or less, uh, we need to get, um, we, we also need to bring in other types of people and perspectives, kind of bring in the roughnecks and, and, and some of the people that, that live hard lives because Mars is gonna be hard. And like what George mentioned, uh, the utility side of, of it is is discussed a lot, but the real difficult realities of the failures of those utilities are going to become very uh, apparent. And so that's the side of it that I'm I'm actively trying to work on also. Yeah, um, I um, I rephrased um, roughnecks as construction workers because I don't know <laughs> where this is going to go. Any other comments about um, standards, construction, building infrastructure behind Musk? Well, one of the things that I've, that I've got a group that I've been working with on a constitution, and I guess in my mind, the thought was part of that constitutional process would be to embrace some of those standards, because the idea would be we have a, an overall government, quote unquote, for Mars, and the, the purpose of that government is not the same as a government here on Earth, but it's to be those... to kind of enforce those standards, you know, on a harsh planet, you know, you want to make sure that everyone has the same docking adapters. You want to make sure everybody has the same filters for CO2. You know, you want to standardize things so that if, you know, settlement B is having trouble, settlement A can just run a rover over there to bail them out. So they don't, you know, don't have that settlement doesn't have to be evacuated. And I kind of thought those go hand in hand, obviously we're, it's taken a little longer than I expected for this. And it's not, you know, I think, well, I also need somebody to kind of try and coordinate all these groups together to try and come together with some cross communication. Um, Cause it seems like we had a lot of people doing the same thing and it might help to kind of break that apart into, you know, smaller chunks as, as everyone's working. Yeah. And remind me what your name is. Uh, sorry. It's Brendan. Brendan. B R E N D A N. Lauer, L-A-U-E-R. Thank you. I, I would add to that. Can you see my uh, uh, camera? Doesn't seem to be working here. Um, no, I don't. Would you, stay, would you say your name? Sure, Art Harmon. I just did a presentation and my camera was working for that. Harman, H-R-M-A-N. Just checking that you're paying attention. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I did uh, over two or three Mars societies. I did presentations titled uh, Liberty in Space, uh, focusing uh, in part on the need for a constitution and establishing the rule of law when you have five people or a dozen people it's not such a big deal but if you get 
50 or 100 people then uh, and then more, then you need a rule of law. You, you need uh, to establish uh, the responsibilities of living and participating in a uh, colony that's um, in a really harsh environment. Uh, and the responsibilities are very different than on Earth, where you can have people that are very actively participating in society and uh, building things and doing stuff and providing services. Um, and you can also have people that are retired or are homeless or sick and uh, whatever, and you've got a society that's a big enough to support those who can't or don't work, uh, and and but on Mars, it's everybody's going to have to be pulling their weight to some degree. Uh, but you also want to make sure that you've got a free sort of government, so it doesn't become like China or Russia, or uh, or one person says I'm suddenly the emperor of this colony, and uh, I've got the guns, and you will obey me. Uh, because human history says that'll happen unless you have everybody educated and uh, uh, enough and prepared that that will happen. You know, it, it's not going to be, well, we've left behind all of the wars and evils of Earth. No, human nature will not change just because you've moved to another world. Uh, there will be people... Um, benevolent people and evil people, you know, maybe 1% or 2% will have motives other than what you expect. Um, and so you have to be prepared for that. Um, and then I'd also say touching on Elon builds the railroad, or as I would call it, the airline, I sometimes said, well, you know, you, you can established 747 service to Antarctica, but what happens when they uh, walk down the stairs, um, they, you need that infrastructure there. And the infrastructure is on Antarctica is 10, 100, 1,000 times easier than the infrastructure on Mars, where you don't want to track in dust because it's got perchlorates and that'll uh, destroy your uh, pituitary and things like that. And uh, you, um, you know, it, it's the, the dust will get all over everything, you know, like your airlock seals and so forth. So the, the complexity is, um, it's really sort of space station complexity, uh, not, you know, cheap, uh, stuff that you know amateurs can put together it, it'll take um, a hell of a lot of work and a hell of a lot of money more than people think yeah all right just a minute um, my clock says we only have three minutes left sorry would oh. everyone who is interested type their email address into the chat and Dusty and Robert could I ask both of you to try to capture the chat I will too but sometimes it fails so everybody who's interested, type their email address. How do I access the yeah. chat? Um, so a button to the, on the bottom of your screen to the next yeah. of the share screen button. That's green. Oh, also, okay. Also, yeah. since this video is being recorded, I will have a transcript of the chat that I can send to you, Bruce, yes. if, you, if you want me to send me. Do you have your email in here that I could just email that to you? Um, yes, it's on the bottom of most slides. So uh, um, anyone who it. wants to just say one sentence, uh, unmute your microphone and try to limit it to one or, you know, one sentence or so. Yeah, Bruce, this is George. Real quick, um, it would be handy. I just started this new chapter in Houston, and it would be handy if there was a package. I know we got a meeting Sunday, but there needs to be some type of information of what we can do the details out the goals, um, you know, the, you know, instead of a website, do we do a Facebook site, uh, you um, know, yeah. a money available for meetings and, you know, what will we get to start these chapters and to move them forward? Because every chapter okay. is different 
and we need to be bringing these together in a common a common way to help each other. Right. I talked to yep. a lot of them last month or two, and everyone's doing it different. Yep. Uh, yeah. So incidentally, I'm also active in the National Space Society. They have a chapters kit. That's they what I'm talking about. Starting chapters. It's always five years out of date, but they 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 do their best. And Something incidentally, I was the I was the chapters coordinator for the first six months of the Mars Society. But I don't want that job again. Anyone else say one sentence? Wait, also, Bruce, we do have. Yeah, another. Bruce, this is. Uh, yeah. yeah, Bruce, uh, this, this is uh, Doug B. in, uh, in Altspace. And uh, I just real quickly, I'd like to propose um, the design and testing of analog uh, use of a, a series of rovers. Uh, specifically, I've never seen them designed for the insertion of a habitat into. A, uh, a lava tube uh, through, say, a, a sun uh, um, a sun opening. Uh, sorry, sad skylight, and um, and maybe com in combination with the deployment of a inflatable. Um, I'd like to see those two together at some point, but um, rovers for both and for mapping and preparing for that uh, insertion into the uh, the lava surface there. Yeah. Um, um, working rovers are, are a big project. It's like designing a car, but um, dropping something down a skylight um, might not be that hard. You know, some rock climbers can do similar things. We should also have another 15 minutes. Um, oh. Since there's no session next, you guys can okay. go for the full minute. And I believe with these accounts, they That's cut fantastic. off automatically at 45 minutes. So that should be another 15 minutes before. The session I'm 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 hosting the session, so I if it'll I think it closes okay. automatically in 15 minutes. Just FYI. All right. So but so I, everybody right, that's everybody helpful. Put, everyone put their email address in the chat if you wish to. <clears throat> if you want my ideas, um, since the Mars Society started, I always thought of doing something a little bit more substantial. Um, the question of uh, what it, what can the Mars Society do? Um, we had tried to organize a really substantial project way back in 1999, which uh, <clears throat> well, Robert Zubrin thought was a little bit too more more than uh, we should take on. But I'd like to see something real. Uh, there's a lot of things that have to be done. The question of who's going to do it and whether the Mars Society can take it on. Um, uh, uh, an MCP spacesuit is needed. Uh, we, we, we can we can when you say something real, do you mean something physical? Design, designing physical machines and objects. I mean something that can be used to get us to Mars, not just an analog and not just a, a space right. that's, that's coveralls and a, a, a garbage yeah. can helmet. Okay. But for example, a spacesuit that can be used on Mars uh, for real. Uh, yep. An MCP spacesuit is something that's been talked about for a long time, and there appears to be no progress by anybody on that. Um, that's something that, frankly, we need. Um, this is actually important because the spacesuit governs the pressure you need in the habitat, and the pressure in the habitat uh, determines a whole lot about what we're going to be doing. You want to be able to go outside in a spacesuit without any oxygen pre-breathe when you're on Mars. Just put on your spacesuit, go through the airlock, and go outside. Um, so this is actually really critical to uh, design of anything you're doing on Mars. Um, in C2 resource uh, uh, utilization, uh, one of the things we talked about in the old uh, Mars Homestead project, yep. uh, harvesting water from ice. Could uh, the idea of melting ice uh outside on mars and then sucking up the water uh making sure that doesn't uh boil away making sure we can do that under the conditions that are on mars is that something that we could actually develop a way of, of actually har like melting the water instead of cutting large chunks and bringing it inside melt the water of uh, say a glacier and sucking up the water with a, a hose um could we develop something like that or um, uh, for the rest of you, Robert lives in Canada. At least he used to. <laughs> Still do. Would like to move to the states. I'm tired of the winter, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so um, I, I, he, I built some ice habitats out on the front lawn of MIT once with some, you know, some people who were building other habitats and, and uh, art structure. So. 
Yeah, uh, Bruce, this is... Uh, Oh, I might be muted still. Arch, no, 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 I, I can, can hear me. I can hear you, Brendan. Great. Yeah, Doug Bates, uh, Doug D again in uh, Altspace. Wanted to um, uh, suggest two more things real quickly. One, uh, just coming to you from Altspace, using uh, this uh, or another virtual reality platform to uh, to interface with uh, analog habitats that people are working with. Um, with a, a simulated one that's created in virtual reality, perhaps, and as well as for outreach and education. Um, and then the other thought is I mentioned earlier in a presentation on the uh, um, about spacesuit design. Yeah, I, I didn't see anything with uh, this year's and um, presentations on, uh, on human waste disposal and uh, whatnot. Uh, we, we talk a lot about food and trying to prepare water and everything that goes input, but we do not talk about the output, and I don't want that to be the last thing that we tr have to figure out on our journey to Mars. So um, if, we, uh, if we could have some, you know, some uh, grounded, serious discussions about space poop, I would, uh, I would love to talk about how we're going to deal with that in spacesuits, uh, how we're going to deal with it in terms of recycling, you know, everything else. So. Um, I think you said space poop, not space food. Yep. Okay. Uh, I did. Space poop was actually a recent uh, a recent project. I, I submitted uh, a proposal with it, and uh, I, yeah. I thought it was a grand thing that we we need to we need to talk a little bit more openly a bit about. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, I'm also um, staying in touch with Doug Plot, the Space Development Network, and they oh. are considering uh, recycling, including poop. But it, it, yeah, it's it's not, you know, well known, well publicized. On the unfortunately, uh, it's not uh, publicized. Go ahead. The last presentation, I tried to touch on that, but uh, there was a lot that had to go into it. I had to rush through it to to fit it within the time frame. Um, but I do have ideas on that. Okay, so so going with the notion of ideas. Excellent. I would say this. Is, sorry, it's John McDonald. I would suggest that what might be extremely useful is taking it up a level and actually making a list of all of the groups that we know that are doing various pieces parts, mm. because understanding who's actually working on a problem suggests, okay, this group has that problem. It may or may not solve that problem, but at least they're working it. But if we discover that there is nobody working on a particular problem, that is the sort of thing that we could at least advocate for somebody to work on it. I don't know if you can do that for a million dollars, but you might realize, okay, there is no one working on how to autonomously deploy solar panels on Mars. We should work on that or get somebody to work on that. Yeah, that, could also be a, that could be a volunteer project too. Wasn't it? Yeah, yeah so I love that idea, uh, having a grid checklist. Go ahead, Marufa. Hi, thank you. So I'm the CEO of Everest Innovation Lab registered in Honolulu, Hawaii. So I, this is just, I mean, we, I registered my company last year, but I'm still looking for support in terms of we could do like a partnership project or something, work with the school children, like education outreach. Or, um, sorry, I, I don't know if anybody taking note or maybe I should just take note. Okay, thank you. So I'm the decision maker basically for my company and I just need to start it. It's been a year and I don't know how to start. In the future, I have planned in the, I could build my facility on the Mount Everest, but before that, I would like to do something in Hawaii because currently I'm here and I could just basically pick 20 school children and give them space suit, do some outreach or like analog astronaut training or any product or any kit, uh, like, you know, like a small, um, anything like VR air. I mean, I'm just open to ideas. What, what how can I start my company? <laughs> it's to be honest. Um, yeah. It, it, there was something earlier I forgot to write down, but what you reminded me is, should we actively help people start companies? You know, should we have an entrepreneurial um, training webinar um, uh, workshops? Um, yes, that's a good idea. We, I mean, I sub submitted one proposal to the uh, International Space Station. So that was about kind of like uh, working on the curriculum, like developing our own curriculum and um, 
designing various projects uh, like how to build satellite you know we can teach children how to build satellite how to find your constellations in the sky how to build your telescopes and basically like give children small uh, product so that they can do it in their house so i mean i can f like self fund initially but i need somebody who has experience doing this type of thing um or yeah that's have... that's pretty broad i'm not quite sure what to, what to type it, it is broad. I, I would ask though, Marifa. Um, I, I imagine you might have some uh, some lava tubes down there in Hawaii. So um, that mm -hmm. that would be uh, something that I'd be very intrigued to see uh, used for research and uh, um, and maybe looking into use of those for habitat and protection. But they have already high seas uh, the facility there. Just I don't want to compete with them <laughs> because they have a facility. Sure thing, and I, it may just be I'm unaware of those. Yep. Oh, okay. I right, was right, there right. in February, so they have, it's like smaller than MDRS, but um, like how to just uh, awareness, like building the awareness to the community, like we could do like a we monthly webinar and have a speaker, we can invite speakers and we can pay them or, um, and then develop a small curriculum for my company. I mean, it's, it's a school basically, Everest Innovation Lab, it could be a school. So just like develop a curriculum and I could just start this school and there is no age limit. So it could be a very innovative school. And in this way, you can just bridge the gap in the society so that people don't just stay homeless. They can just come and learn something or, you know, and those who doesn't have privilege to go to school, they can just, uh, yeah, but it's, maybe, maybe sounds broad, but this is more like a dream, but we can start from small. Um, Thank you for listening. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh, you're welcome. I also think um, maybe starting to look at some uses for AR. You know, this is going to be six, seven years in the future, and AR glasses should be much more manageable. Use them for identification, uh, evacuation, emergency uses, you know, identifying exits. Um, Maybe even a HUD for an EVA suit, you know, keeping an eye on oxygen levels, CO2 levels, uh, maybe basic identification of, you know, features on Mars or in, in the environment. Uh, I just feel like AR in a, in a life suit or even just in the habitat would be a huge bonus to, you know, ease of use and, and safety on the plant on, on Mars. Uh, Brandon, would you confirm you mean augmented reality and heads up display? Yes. Good. Yes. Last I heard, those those glasses were a few years away, and that was a few years ago. So I, you know, we got Microsoft with the Hololens. Um, we got Magic Eye. So so those are going to just keep getting better and better. Yeah, yeah. I could really see crew members at a settlement wanting um, their their heads up display or their augmented reality pointing them the way to the exit and where to buy a. Um, you know, a hamburger or something. <laughs> well, yes, that, but also like in the, you know, you know, if there's a fire in the, in the hab, you know, and there's smoke everywhere, well, the, your glasses will be able to tell you where the exit is. So you know how to, to navigate through the, right. through the, through the fire. Um, I no, also that would wonder. Be really good. That would I be also, really good for EV, um, EVA uh, operations, because if you had the uh, uh, heads up displays, um, it would free up their hands to do other things. Yes, uh, fighter pilots already Good have use. Those. I don't think astronauts do. Um, and, and that was a new voice. Um, who was talking? Uh, this is Adrian McLean. Oh. Uh, yeah, I had been thinking about that same thing, to be able to incorporate that into their uh, spacesuits, to be able to wear out onto the terrain so that they could keep track of uh, direction, uh, keep track of... Uh, um, you know, different have be access to a database that they can identify certain terrains that they're heading into without, you know, taking the maps or whatever with them. Sure. Um, e e anybody you know who space? has not, anyone who has not spoken. I can try yes. to speak about the economics. Yeah. My name is Ron Friedman. In terms of economics, I think we should try to reach out for the crypto blockchain community for two reasons. One, to raise fund, and the second, 
to have some way of trying to think how the economy on Mars is going to work. This is a very exciting field that may have a lot of influence on how technological future. Getting back to AR, a good use case would be inventory management. Uh, you want to find something that's buried in a box, could give you x-ray vision. Are uh, you to do where your cold supplies are, where this right screwdriver is? And that's something that could start being used on Earth before Mars. And Bruce Tree Nuts, that's J here in Alt Space. Um, okay, sure, thank you. Anyone else who has not talked? It's, the, the room may close automatically in one minute, plus or minus five. So um, I want to thank everybody giving these ideas. Um, again, here it, whoops, that's not it. Um, here is my contact information on the screen. That's also in the chat. And um, if anybody wants to start a, 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 I see a need for something written down here, which is the uh, regular discussions at, um, in, in a settlement special interest group. So um, I, I get the sense that uh, we really need to do that. I almost wonder if we need somebody who's a representative to discuss with SpaceX because anything with HAB would involve cargo space and also kind of what the, re the restraints are or the restrictions on, you know, using, uh, you know, how is material going to get to the ground? What, what can those cranes handle um so kind of some more details maybe that's further along but um this is close enough that i think we need to have a regular contact with spacex to understand where their plans are so that we can start aligning our plans as we start moving forward if this becomes serious i would agree with that and i think actually an interesting aspect of that is i don't think spacex knows yet and yeah, so I think potentially right. we could influence that. I mean, um, he, said, he said he wants partners. So I say, let's take him up on it and say, we're willing to be partners to make this happen. What do you need from us? Ooh, willing to be partners. Yeah. Um, and whose voice is that? I, that I'm was sorry. Brendan again. Brendan. Yeah. And then John McDonald. Right. Yeah. That's a good one, John. Um, one observation, I, uh, in terms of you know just areas that we seem to be missing, we haven't talked at all about the uh, uh, politics, and you said that was kind of uh, lacking. You thought a bit. Um, I don't have any great suggestions in that area, but um, but I do agree that there's uh, there's some challenges there. Um, I I don't know any. I'm just trying to kind of steer us that direction to see if we could maybe open up some other ideas from others here. Yeah, by the way, just this morning, I was carbon copied on a private message from someone in the National Space Society to one of the officers of the Mars Society saying, uh, you know, let's let's get back in touch on politics and political action related to U.S. Congress. Well, maybe we should look at some more, like you said, at some more places for alliances. You know, there's places that there's overlap. You know, in essence, we're trying to become multiplanetary. So those those groups that are looking at just orbital stuff or stuff with the moon. You know, where are there places that we can both work together um, to advance our agenda in, in general? Indeed. Um, I want to address that. Um, there have been a number of space organizations that started, that got founded because somebody thought that the that no other organization was doing exactly what they thought should should be done. And so, and, and in some cases, they got mad with leaders and, and split off. Um, I'd say about half of the groups got founded that way. And um, those kind of hard feelings are hard to overcome. So, and, yeah, and also by having a variety of, of organizations, varieties of styles and goals, um, 
it, it's more likely that, that some of them will succeed rather than having one monolithic space organization that, that may not be effective or go astray. But Maybe you need to update the objectives of the Mars Society because you mentioned that was some old, old document stuff. Maybe that should be a project itself. Make sure that more formalized, was, perhaps more formalized. Just make sure that the, what's listed there is is still the main objective of everybody in the society, and that everybody agrees on that. Yeah, uh, let, let, let me go back to that. Um, I think it's this slide. So, <clears throat> if I could address that point, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a minute, Rob. So, <laughs> on marssociety.org/about is is this exact quote? Mars Society is dedicated to human exploration and settlement, and it doesn't say other things. Go ahead, Rob. Part of the original objective was to eventually uh, hitchhike with a NASA probe to send something to Mars for real. Um, back in the early, well, 1999, that's like one year after the founding, uh, we had suggested sending a very small something by uh, using a getaway special on, on the shuttle to get to orbit and then heading off to Mars and send something very small to Mars for real. Um, again, getting back to this idea of, I mean, it was part of the Mars Society's uh, objectives initially to send something to some, something small to Mars for real. How about getting back to that and actually doing it? I think it would get a lot of media attention if we actually did that. Well, with Starship, it could be even something big. You know, they have to send something for test <laughs> landing on on Mars, and we can say, "Hey, you guys need well, a, a well, test it, payload." It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, guys. There's two things here. One is when Elon wants to do a test launch of the Starship on a long trajectory, let's give him something in addition to a red um, t Tesla to launch to Mars. And then the second thing is what Rob said: is can we design, build, and and launch a hitchhiker payload? Fairly small. Um, there was a cube site, cube sat size satellite at Mars. Does anybody remember how it got launched? What kind of, you know, vehicle it, it, it launched on? I remember the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter had two small cube sats it carried with it that okay. effectively mm -hmm. became flybys um, to uh, watch the uh, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter enter Mars orbit. Uh, is that what you're thinking of? Yeah, yeah, I believe that's it. Yes. Okay. Sounds right. Uh, uh, one, one thing again, uh, back to uh, politics and, and very broadly, um, I will suggest that the, the, the greatest existential threat that I see in anything, and this pervades this, or I should say it exasperates uh, a pandemic, it exasperates threats to democracy, it, it, everything is worse, simply comes down to um, the way that uh, uh, engagement-based social media promotes the, the worst in people, the tribalism of uh, so many things, and, and it, it pushes outrage and outrageousness. Um, tying that specifically to Mars would be fantastic, but it's a huge broad thing and i would love to see any effort around it um anywhere whatsoever uh with in terms of specifically around mars and space um we've certainly we've you know i, I live in denver colorado we've got the uh the flat earth convention was here just a few uh a few years ago and uh, I, I happened to run across that and um you know there's people that you know genuinely believe these things and we're we're in a, an age where uh it, it's difficult to find truth for so many people. Um, if there's anything we could do to help address that, I would be 100% behind that. Wow. Fortunately, I think that has to do with more of the government because with, with Facebook, that's misaligned as, um, incentives. Their whole uh, mindset is keeping everybody on the site no matter what, and outrage keeps people on the site. And so it's a, it's a negative feedback loop that's been going on for decades. I think yeah. it's also about... I, I would say government. If somebody have, doesn't have education, it's about education, right? If somebody doesn't know, they don't have the yeah. knowledge. But also, mm -hmm. if, since you're writing about my name, I mean, what if we are we want to open a chapter, Mars Society chapter in Hawaii? How can oh, we yes. 
how can Marshall said to help us? Like what? what? Okay. Um, well, the, the the easy thing to do is to attend um, a session tomorrow night. It's, it's on okay. the schedule for this for mm -hmm. this conference. Um, I think it's about eight thirty Eastern time. Okay. So it'll okay. be about five or five thirty Pacific time. And that if not, it's six uh, p.m. Uh, it's nine so p.m. So, 9 p.m. Someone said. Yeah, I'll check the okay. schedule. So, so anyway, if not, just send a note to mm -hmm. info at marssociety.org and say, please forward this to the right person. That's info at marssociety.org. Or, or I can talk with James. I mean, I. I have, oh, yeah. That yeah. also works. Yeah, it's listed yes. at, not, at 9 p.m. Uh, Pacific okay. time. Okay, okay. Yeah, um, there is a specific person appointed as the new chapter's coordinator. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I just saw her name and face earlier today. She was okay. she was going to be with the Mars University, but she's also doing things um, in um, Mars Society. Um, she lives in uh, Canada, and she's from someplace like Australia. But I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, her name escapes me now. Because yeah, I think I saw R. that also in Facebook. But uh, sorry yeah. to interrupt you again. The 9 p.m. meeting uh, is it uh, not, not in the schedule? It's different different meeting. It's during Tomorrow? the it's it's on it's the track B afternoon session. Oh, it's, okay. Um, it's the Mars Society Chapter Council. Okay, it's listed got it. as between yeah. six p.m. to seven thirty p.m. Pacific time. Okay, I see that here. Okay, thank you. So I'll try to attend that one. Very helpful. So the Zoom room did not oh, close. Uh, on uh, yeah, although I believe Alt Space may need to close shortly. Our host okay. uh, had to leave, so. Um, oh. So I'm, I'm probably going to just say thank you all. I appreciate everything, and I'll certainly try to stay connected on Slack and such. Yeah, um, thank you. I also wonder real quick um, on leisure on Mars. So we know just generally we want to duplicate Earth. Does that mean we're going to have like a separate copy of the internet on Mars? Um, what does that mean for trying to keep in touch with the main internet on on Earth? Um, you know what what needs to be done differently? You know. Not everything is going to work seamlessly with the light delay. As far um, as it, even just news and updates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brendan, let me let me answer that immediately. Um, what you can do is um, arrange it so that if you can anticipate what you want, like you could open a web page and then you say, "I want to I want to see these links," and you click on several links in a row, and then over the next five to 40 minutes, those links are all retrieved as a batch from Earth. Once they are retrieved, they are cached on Mars so that other people can see the cached version. Um, it's a, it, it's a, it's a well-known problem called synchronizing um, mm. computer files. Dropbox does it, um, you know, the, all, all the cloud servers do it. So, so you need to synchronize the web pages but when you go to a new web page that wasn't anticipated, it could take up to 40 minute delay. Yeah. And if the sun is, um, if you're in occultation with the sun, then it's got to go through a relay satellite that might be very low bandwidth. So you'll be competing with other people for limited bandwidth. So. Well, maybe we should think about that because, you know, we do want the, yeah. part, of the part of the point with Mars is for it to be basically a backup in case something were to happen to earth. And so, what type ooh, of ooh, archiving? Ooh, that, it, it, hang on, that's a new topic. Do we what want kind to of archiving that? would we need to have? What archiving? I wonder if commercial companies would let us archive their um, um, manufacturing details, their confidential files on the condition that we never look at them unless the earth is destroyed. <laughs> or what, well, you know, maybe we, it's just, uh, you know, we have the, the, the patents have a, have a, have a set life. And so after the patents expire, they would be, you know, potentially usable on Mars for whatever. Yeah. Well, most companies have trade secrets far beyond their patent. Yeah, well, that's true. Work. Yeah. One is a biology. We probably need seeds. Oh yeah, a copy of all this of of organic life on Earth. Oh, also, um, <laughs> okay. pets. Has have anyone looked at what it would take to get pets to Mars? Bring cats yeah. and dogs and other things. 
Yeah, just a minute. Um, I, I, there's um, something called genomic <laughs> backup, where you where you stockpile seeds for all the useful vegetables and crops, including heirloom vegetables. So. Ah. Also, we could do like Google uh, Google Earth Pro. Like we can choose. Sorry, <laughs> the roosters are talking. Uh, Google Earth Pro, and we can um, uh, teach uh, where is which location on Mars, and like kind of like Mar Martian settlements. I presented yesterday one million Mars population settlements, so various locations and. So basically like Google Earth Pro and GIS mapping for Mars. Um, yeah, there are people with, um, James work is, is connected with an effort doing, trying Google to do Google Earth that. Pro all together. Yeah. Um, he, there was a comment I missed about two people ago. Um, if anybody looks at the screen and doesn't see what they want, please tell me. Uh, pets or animals, bringing pets, animals to that's Mars? That's right. Pets, pets. Um, let me go off on a tangent here. When my daughter was in first grade, we got a, um, a guinea pig. For, well, she got a guinea pig. And I asked her on Mars, how about taking guinea pigs? And um, we'll, use all, we'll use most of the male guinea pigs for, for laboratory experiments, you know, you know, determine what's toxic and things like that. And we'll have the, the female guinea pigs as, as pets for the children. And she said, no. No, do not do that. <laughs> Send laboratory rats for the experiment. And the guinea pigs should only be pets. <laughs> yeah, and uh, what I want to see is uh, flying squirrels in a low gravity greenhouse. <laughs> you, you know, see how long they can glide. Anyway. Right, right. Also, another uh, greenhouse, like we could build like APH, like advanced plant habitat or vegetation, like we have on the ISS. We could taste, I mean, on, on Earth. Like how to build a um, greenhouse in a small setup and work with the sensors, small scale greenhouse. So basically like APH, like advanced plant ha habitat. Yeah. Small yeah, like, a, like a, a greenhouse for leisure, like not for food, but for like walking, you want to walk in the park. And so we would have to create that on Mars. Yeah, yeah. but we can taste all the sen sensors, lighting and electricity and water nexus and also Teach, teach children how to grow food. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. People are working on that, um, including within the Mars Society. Oh, it's just a quick note. It is now uh, time for the evening plenaries. So if anybody wants to head yeah. out for that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think we should call it a quiz. Yeah. Thank um, you very much. Sure. Um, thanks. I, I want to thank everybody for talking, <laughs> at least those who did. I, I was really afraid I, I, that there'd just be dead silence so you're welcome <laughs> yeah all I'll right go ahead i'll go ahead and email you the copy of the chat um yes thank you here after i close the close the window right. are we down to four people it looks like yes in that case okay. um bruce yes um i was Rob. just a cube saw uh remember what our project was back in 1999 uh well there was the um hillside settlement um, homestead well, project before that there was the um, uh, uh mars balloon oh and when we were trying to get that to go there was one uh, recent graduate who just graduated with his phd designing aero shells and he wanted to design the aero shell for our project and of course um somehow i ended up being the basically the project manager i just sort of fell into that um, and of course, I said a PhD, and oh, yes, uh, yeah, please join our project. Um, yes, <laughs> that that was uh, Paul Wooster. He's now oh. working for SpaceX. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. He's uh, uh, he's a very important person in in uh, SpaceX. I, I I've been in touch with him. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it'd be nice if if what we send to Mars it doesn't just do a flyby like the the CubeSats did, but something that could actually land on Mars, whether it's a balloon or a tiny rover, maybe a VR rover that we put on Mars for real, and you can uh, uh, we do a we do a helicopter. Now we know that flight's possible. Or, yeah. yeah. 
uh, like how about something where you can request the the helicopter or rover to go here and have take take pictures? Uh, and then um, yeah, we can already do that from one of the orbiters. The public can go to a website and say, "Please take pictures here," and NASA will try to do it. Oh, I didn't know that. That's interesting. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And in fact, um, SpaceX inadvertently got their names on some on some photos. Um, somebody from SpaceX requested specific photos from specific sites in the northern hemisphere, in the dusty area. And those have now been named the SpaceX landing sites without permission from SpaceX. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think Everyday Astronaut was doing his, you know, I've got one of his shirts and he's got the coordinates yeah. of a couple of la potential landing sites for SpaceX. Hey, Rob, I got this in Canada. <laughs> Oh uh, yes, object appears closer, or object is closer than it appears. Right, that's yeah. that was from the Toronto chapter. <laughs> oh, guys, let's quit. All right, or at least at least I want to. All right, well, thank you for the time, and uh, I guess we'll see you in the in the evening plenaries. Yep. Uh, Take care, guys. Thank you.